I'm sure you've heard of kidney or heart transplants, but have you heard of poop transplants? Hey guys, it's Dr. Mike. Welcome to another episode of the Wednesday Checkup. Today's topic is gonna be fecal transplantation. When I say fecal, I want you to think poop because that's exactly what it is. It means we're taking a donor's poop and actively transplanting it into our patients. We take a little tube, we put it into their mouth, we feed it through the digestive system and implant this poop into their intestines, hopefully to make a better change or cure whatever illness is going on. Fecal transplants have been used in specific specific conditions quite well with great research. A good example of that is something called C. diff infection. Now this is a horrible bacterial infection that is almost life-threatening in some cases where you get horrible diarrhea, a patient can become septic and even lose their life as a result. In these cases, when antibiotics fail, we sometimes resort to these fecal transplants. The reason why I'm even bringing poop transplants up today. Just this week, there was a study out of Europe talking about how fecal transplants can be a potential treatment for IBS. IBS is irritable bowel syndrome. I don't want you to get confused with IBD, which is inflammatory bowel disease. This is a serious disease where you actually have damage being done to your intestines. IBS is more symptom-based, and while it can cause significant distress because of pain, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, there's no damage being done, at least directly to the intestines. So when we're looking at patients who have IBS, we think about potential treatments for them. Right now, our treatments are kind of weak. Why? Because we don't really understand how IBS comes about. One of the prevailing theories is that there's a disruption to the microbiome. The microbiome is all of the bacteria that exist in our intestines. Now this bacteria is supposed to be there. We coexist with this bacteria. It actually helps us live in some cases, get nutrients out of food. But when the bacteria shifts and becomes more bad than good, it can cause problems like IBS. At least that's what the prevailing theory is. So what researchers are trying to do is figure out how we can shift the microbiome to have more good bacteria. And one of those ways is through fecal transplants. This week's study isn't the first one to be done testing if fecal transplants work for IBS. The past studies have really had mixed reviews. Some saying there is some benefit, others saying that there isn't. So this study caught my attention because it found an incredibly significant benefit. Let me break it down for you. This study took 164 participants and broke them up randomly into two groups. One group was gonna get a fecal transplantation, but of their own poop. So essentially they were getting a placebo. The second group was actually broken up into two subgroups. The first subgroup was gonna get 30 grams of a donor's poop and the second subgroup was gonna get 60 grams, which is double the dosage. The reason for setting up the experiment this way is to figure out not only if getting donor poop transplanted helps in IBS, but also to see if increasing the dosages has any effect as well. This study had an incredible result for those who had the donor fecal transplant. In the placebo group, after a period of three months, we only saw 5% symptom remission. Essentially, 95% of people three months later were still ill and having symptoms of IBS. Moving into the first subgroup who got the lower dose of the donor poop, they had 35% symptom remission. The higher dose, nearly 50% complete remission. 10 times more likely than those who got the placebo to get complete, essentially cure of IBS symptoms. This is quite powerful, but this is only after three months, right? Well, no, NBC News actually contacted the lead researcher of this study, and they said that after a year, these results basically held true, 90 to 95%. The question becomes, why is this donor's poop so effective at curtailing IBS symptoms in comparison to other studies? Because it's super poop. The lead researcher of this study explained that the donor poop sample that they were using came from an individual who was quite healthy, maintained a healthy diet, did not smoke, did not use antibiotics regularly for their viral conditions that don't need antibiotics. This presents a very complex challenge to us in the medical community, but also some promising news. It tells us that A, there's hope for fecal transplantation to be used for conditions like IBS. But the real challenge becomes, who do we use as our super donors? And I think this study should really reignite the fire of the gastroenterology research community and get us excited about studying how IBS can be treated with fecal transplants by super donors. Essentially defining what a super donor is and how should we in the medical community search for these individuals. 
all these questions are yet to be answered, and we will answer them in the future. But right now, what I'd like to do is open up a few packages, because it's mail time. Okay, we got one from, I don't know, but it says do not bend, and there's like 400 stamps on it, so I'm excited to see it. <gasps> what? Can I get a drum roll, Dan? Fake drum roll in the edit? Roxy, hand drawn. Look at that detail. Holy mo- Oh my god, I'm getting these framed. Second drum roll. Boom! Bear, this is you. Okay, Bear, get out. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Indiano, you will see these in my videos because this is absolutely amazing artwork. Thank you so much for this. All right, this one is from Nuts. <laughs> And it says nuts for nuts. And I'm kind of nuts for nuts, so I'm excited for this. Dr. Mike, you said in your recent video that you love to receive nuts. I immediately thought of this company, which has always made me laugh with their cute and funny boxes. Look at the little nuts. I love it, thank you so much. I'm super excited to try this. Oh, look who's here to get some nuts. No nuts for you. Well, I guess I could store these nuts with the rest of my nuts in my dishwasher. All right, next package. Uh, this one is from Canada. Our neighbors just north. They got some strong tape in Canada. Greetings from Toronto. Enjoy some Canadian maple syrup and some other treats from your neighbor up north. We have Bernie's Mound Dogs in our family and we thought Bear might like a toy Canadian moose like ours do. Bear! Oh, I love maple syrup. It's so yummy. I'm excited to try it. Bear! We got yours. You ready? Up. Oh! What a savage. I got you a treat, man. Well, I didn't get you a treat. Our wonderful neighbors from up north got you a moose. Let's take this off so you don't eat it. Eat the moose. It's the same color as bear. Look. Do you not like the moose? Here, you can play with it. Take it. He's unsure of what to do with the moose. Go get the moose. Oh wait, there's more. Coffee crisps. You guys know that I'm unhealthy. Next. Oh, this is from Jamaica. I've been to Jamaica. Montego Bay. It's a doll of me. I was concerned for a second. I hope it wasn't voodoo. Hey, Dr. Mike, you can choose whether or not to open on camera. I've been getting and making crochet dolls. And when I say I have been, I mean I made two. <laughs> Yours is the second doll I made. Okay, well, let's check it out. The fact that you packaged him in saran wrap kind of is a little sketch. <laughs> you're trying to choke him out or something. It obviously looks like me, because look at those thunder thighs and the little head. That's definitely me. Lower body, way bigger than upper body. But still got these guns, though. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Shout out to all my Jamaican homies, woo! Oh, wow. This is from... Canada also, but this was screened by US Customs and Border Patrol. I wonder what they thought this was. They were like, oh, look, it has a doctor's name on it. It must be shady. <laughs> this looks like some kind of torture device. Oh, wait, is this the glove that you can like de-shed dogs with? Bear, come here. Just checking it for hazardous materials. Nope, it's just a cute little teddy bear. Bear sniffing it for potential threats. Everything feels it's like it's safe. I love you to the moon and back. How sweet. Wish we met. A ring? Are you proposing? I love that there's two rings in here. Is this for us? <laughs> this is starting to get weird. <laughs> a cross with Jesus on it? Okay, not religious, but I can roll with it and appreciate it. Oh, that's if I want to get real gangster. <laughs> and really flash. That's really sweet. Seriously, thank you. It says sending you stuffs on video and it's fragile. With the help of my friends and the star registry, I was able to register a star in your name. Boom. Extra bright star name deed. Dr. Mikhail Varshavsky Dio with my birthday and the star's astronomically verified position is right ascension, five hours, 51 minutes. Yo, I'm officially official. Dr. Mikhail Varshavsky is a star. Thank you so much. Since we just talked about the microbiome, click here for my probiotics video to see what supplements you should or shouldn't take. And if you want a good laugh, click on this bad boy. I'll see you in one of these videos. Which one's it gonna be? Pick, pick, and be happy and healthy when you do.